Hey, this is Evan from Octane Electrons. All right, we're going to do a video showing how to put the Weber downdraft uh, carb and intake from uh, Burt's Model A on my uh, 1930 Sport Coupe. So here's the car. Got a good running car, good motor, but uh, I'm just tired of screwing with the Zenith carb. It always runs rich uh, after multiple rebuilds and cleanings and new jets and everything. Um, so I'm tired of it. I'm going to the Weber downdraft. Um, so here's what we're starting with. We got a nice clean motor with a rebuild. Um, came with the car and runs well already, but just burns uh, burns a, a little bit of oil. And uh, yeah, and it, it just runs super rich. I'm tired of screwing with it. So, okay, so that's what we're starting with on the car. And we'll do a whole video showing how to swap it. I've never installed one. So this video will follow along and we'll see how it goes. Here is the... Um, intake and carb kit from Burt's so we have a nice cast uh, intake manifold I've got some new gaskets in here also gonna be doing a high compression head but we'll do that later after it's running well with the uh, Weber so it comes with a Weber a 3236 model I think um, and the uh, throttle linkage so everything's there so it should be pretty straightforward so I'm gonna um, well, let's see the other stuff we'll do have a six volt fuel pump, um, pressure regulator, fitting kit, a uh, choke kit um, to be able to remove the gav shaft and use a cable choke. Um, yeah, so that's everything there. Only other thing I need to get I don't have yet is a filter, so I'll pick up a fuel filter later. Um, yeah, but here's what we're starting with. So I'm going to set up my camera here on the holder and then uh, we'll just start removing it. I'm just going to film the whole thing. I'll point out anything that looks interesting and um, hopefully this will help. All right. Okay, over here at the car. Hopefully filming from this angle works well and I'm not blocking much of it. So I'm gonna get started. I have my um, oil pressure line that I still need to shorten uh, from my pressure gauge tied up here to the fuel line. So I'm gonna remove that. And uh, Hopefully I'll get around here soon to shortening it and getting rid of all this loops and stuff. All right, do that so I can kind of move it out of the way. Just do that little bend. We'll go check and make sure I shut the fuel off. I did not when I moved the car, of course, so it feels off. Disconnect the throttle linkage here. Okay, so get ready to remove my old carb. I can do this quickly because I've done this part a million times if I keep screwing with this carburetor. Loosen the uh, nut here for the gab and choke rod. Okay, remove that, remove that, spring washer. Slide off the little belt, gasket, or whatever you call it, because that's all going to come out of the car that way. I'm going to set this stuff down. Okay, I'm going to get my wrenches here. Move my fuel line. Where do I have a one half for the fuel line? Crack this loose. Okay. some drips but I shut the fuel off so there shouldn't be much okay there we go and I'm just kind of slide that back out of the way I'm gonna leave the original um, strainer glass strainer here and we'll probably use some rubber line off of this to our fuel pump but We'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the carburetor first from the intake. And those are half inch on this car. Okay. Okay, that should be loose. Hold the carb up. One. All right, got that removed. Screw those 
back in so I don't lose them. Because I'll, I don't know, keep or sell this end taken carb maybe. I do think it's a good carburetor overall. Um, it pr I put new jets in it of the original size. I'm at 5,000 feet here and it I think it probably could be solved with jetting, but I'm just more comfortable and familiar with the newer Weber carb, so I, I'm gonna go in that route anyways. Um, okay, so let's see if I still have a good shot. Okay, probably lower this a little bit. So now we need to remove, adjust this. Okay, so we need to remove the intake manifold. I have not done that yet on this car. So when I'm looking, um, I'm not positive if I have to remove the exhaust manifold as well. So I guess we'll try. It looks like, I know for heating, I think it's bolted to the side of the exhaust manifold. So I think I need to remove these two to let it separate. And then I'm probably gonna have to remove all of the bolts here. Um, that hold them both to the block, it looks like. Yeah, and I'm gonna replace the gasket anyway, so. Okay. So I'll go ahead and remove these two first that hold them together, and then I'll pull the four um, nuts. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I'm gonna, for now, leave the manifold connected to the exhaust pipe, and then we'll see if I can just leave the exhaust manifold hanging here while I pull this out, and then, Maybe that works, maybe not. So I need to get a socket and be right back. All right, let's keep going. So I got a half inch here so I can remove these and use my trusty old Harbor Freight electric ratchet that always works great. Okay. Both of those removed, set these up here. Okay, so I'm assuming that's gonna let me separate the intake manifold from the exhaust manifold. We'll find out. All right, now I'm going to get these loosened one at a time a little bit. Hoping these nuts come off and leave the studs in place. Let's we'll see. Okay. Get it loosened up pretty good. Make sure this isn't too hot. I was running the car for a minute while I was moving it. Okay, I see we got uh, some fuel leaking. Okay. So, remove the nut and washer from each one. There's number three. All right, and number four. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can slide that out. Yep. All right, nice. That slides out easily. So here's our old intake manifold. down okay and there we go pull the exhaust manifold away should be plenty of play in the exhaust pipe okay take my throttle off yeah so i got plenty of play in the pipe so i can kind of set it out of the way while i take a closer look all right we got some rings or collars here that are on the, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I see where each one goes. 
Uh, they stay. They're on each of the um, exhaust uh, ports. It looks like. Let me see which one didn't come out. Okay, that one is on the manifold side. This one, I think, would have been right here then. Okay. So, looks like my old gaskets were okay. But I'm probably going to want to clean this up. I think I'm going to go ahead and remove the manifold from the pipe, actually. Because it's going to be easier to clean it. Make sure the gasket surface is good that way. So, let me see here. Need a 9 sixteenths. Get my wrench. Okay, and my socket. here at the collar and what am I seeing here oh, it looks like there was some sealant or something on the collar okay oh one half the collar still stuck there we go tap that loose and not quite Okay, there we go. So the exhaust collar is removed. Grab the nut I dropped. Okay. Set that out of the way. Make sure my pipe's not too hot. Wiggle it around a little bit. Exhaust manifold removed. Yeah, and I can see where that little collar stuck in one of these. That's okay. Okay, there we go. So now I got access to the side of the motor. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean up, uh, remove the gaskets from both sides. I don't think I'll show that. It's not super interesting. I'm gonna pry these off, clean the surface. Same thing on the manifold. And then we'll uh, get started installing the uh, new intake. Okay, back on the Model A. I uh, probably can't tell, but I stopped a few days because I found out I would actually ordered the wrong gasket set. It was for a, a Model B engine. Um, so I had happened to pull off the valve cover just to replace the gasket and found out my gasket set was wrong. So anyways, had to stop for a few days. Got the right gaskets. Um, ended up going with copper intake and exhaust gaskets. Um, I have them setting up there. I already put a new gasket on the valve cover, but I didn't show that. Um, I hit the copper gaskets with the copper spray gasket sealant. I've used this for my old Triumphs and it seems to work well on copper. Okay, so let that sit for a minute. Go ahead and get these in place around these. Um, you got, oh yeah, it's real sticky. Got these little rings around the exhaust. Um, ports. And I put them back in place, so. Get my gasket lined up there. Around the rings, so I have the rings back in place on the exhaust ports. 
All right, trying not to get copper on my new manifolds. Now, I haven't done this before. I don't know if the order matters between exhaust and intake, but I'm gonna try and set my exhaust in place first. Let it hang there for a minute. Okay. And then here's my intake for the Weber carb. I already removed the carburetor. I'll move my fuel line out of the way a little bit. Get these all lined up. Okay. Lined up on the bolts. All right. Okay, everything looks all right. Go ahead and push in my exhaust manifold a little bit. Make sure everything looks good. And then my intake. Okay, try and hold it there while I get washer and nuts started. I had to grab an 11 16 here because I'm slowly tightening these up and unlike with the old intake manifold you do not have access for a socket um, on the nuts any longer so you have to use a wrench so no problem okay so I've just been slowly tightening these Use my wrench now, draw them all in. I was checking from the top and making sure everything's seating flat. And it is, it looks great. Everything's drawing in to the gasket just fine. So I'm just going to keep tightening. I'll have to look up um, torque specs. I do not know what they are for this, but that's fine. For now, I'm just going to snug these all up. And these copper gaskets look awesome. The old ones were the like kind of metal film with the little raised bumps on it. I don't know what you call that. And they kind of came apart when I removed them. I only suspected I maybe had a leak here at the intake or something, but I couldn't prove it. So anyways, I do think I'll get a better seal with these new gaskets. Exhaust manifold and intake. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my carb, set it on there, and we'll figure out this linkage. All right, so after making multiple mistakes, I'm gonna show you what I did. Um, I didn't video this because it took a little while to sort out. So I put the um, carb back on the intake manifold. I removed the air filter and the um, cover bottom plate here so I could get to the bolts with a socket, um, or the nuts, sorry, and I tightened them all up. So carbs mounted, um, we'll put the filter on later. I am definitely gonna change this filter out for something that looks less like it. Should go on a Volkswagen Bug or something, um, but for now it's fine. Okay, so carb was mounted, then I started looking at, move this down, started looking at the linkage. So it includes, um, the bracket and the linkage here. However, this piece is way too long. Um, and they say you may need to bend your linkage, your original linkage back towards the firewall, which you definitely did. Okay, so what first place I started was to adjust this uh, to a position where I had a totally vertical throw on the arm for the Weber. 
Okay, so I think that'll make for the smoothest travel. Okay, so that's where I lined that up and then I adjusted this so it sat against the stop ground here into the manifold and tightened it up. So the bracket's in place. Now we have our linkage here. Okay, now this was too long. Um, so the original uh, linkage part here, it's kind of hard to show. You originally just went straight down, has a little ball on the end. Um, what I did was use my yellow map gas torch and I heated up uh, around the middle. Let's see if I can show you it better here. I heated up around the middle of the um, arm here that the old throttle linkage was on. And as I got it real hot, I would put pliers on it and just give it a little bend. So I kept doing that until I got it to tilt backwards enough where I could get a good um, adjustment now out of my, my throttle linkage. So that gave me full travel and a good vertical throw at the carburetor. So all that worked great. However, what I did that you should be careful of, I was heating too close to my return spring that goes up here um, and forces the original linkage back to the rest position. And I weakened this too much and broke the end of the spring off. So that's okay, I'll replace it. I'm not gonna stop the project for now. But anyways, don't do what I did. I had a nice new spring on there and I just broke it. So now that we got that done, um, I'm gonna move on to a uh, fuel system. So let me kind of figure out what we're doing next. We're adding a fuel pump and filter here. So let me kind of figure that out and then I'll start shooting the next part. Thanks. All right, I uh, did a horrible job of following up this video and I kind of ran out of time to film it. Um, so I had to go ahead and wrap it up so I get the car drivable again. So unfortunately I didn't video step-by-step -step finishing this, but I'll show you where I ended up. So again, sorry, a lot going on and it's hard to film these all uh, sometimes. So anyways, um, all right. So I think where I left off, I had the carb mounted. Um, I ended up having to take everything back apart and put some red sealant, um, red RTV sealant on my manifolds uh, gaskets because I wasn't getting a good seal. I had an exhaust leak. I also had to grind down right here the ears. Um, so I measured the um, tabs where the stud would go through on the um, exhaust manifold because they were thinner and the new intake manifold was thicker. So I measured those and then I ground these down. I used a file and a grinder and, and uh, made them the perfect uh, match for the ears on the exhaust. So that let them um, get even pressure from the nut and washer there. So that worked really well. And then some red high temp RTV and I used some here at the exhaust uh, pipe as well. And that worked great, no more leaks. But yeah, I had a real nasty exhaust leak when I first put it back together. So I did that. Um, carb mounted, I think we talked about that. Um, and I remember I mentioned here, I had to bend the um, throttle linkage backwards and I broke my spring. So I got a new spring. I still need to get that. It's not hooked perfectly, but I'll get that fixed. And then adjusted the linkage. So I have it set there. So I have a vertical throw here. I adjusted this to the right position and then got this set. So I've got full travel on my throttle linkage. Um, you can see my choke cable, I'll show you inside. My choke cable runs through from the original GAV uh, choke rod um, mount, I'll show you. Mounts there and goes through the choke linkage here. So that works great. Um, and I'll show you inside in a second. So the rest of it, um, I mounted, got my six volt fuel pump right here. Um, I'm gonna get some new hard line and bend this real nice, make it look good, but this is a good temporary setup that works fine. So I'm using um, no filter here in the sediment bowl. Um, my hard line out ties into a replaceable filter here. And then I'm gonna, like I said, replace all this line and tuck it up against the firewall later. But I have it run up here into my pump, out of my pump, down, and I run into a uh, dual output um, fuel pr pressure regulator. So I'm coming in here. Um, one of my outputs goes to a pressure gauge. So I was gonna plug it and pressure gauge is 20 bucks. I figured I'd put one on so I can adjust it and make sure I'm always keeping um, two, three pounds pressure like the Weber needs. Um, here's my other output, which is run into my carburetor. 
So yeah, all that's pretty simple, works well. Um, I'll tell you about wiring up the fuel pump in a second, because if you have a stock Model A wiring, you can't just tie it into the key switch. Um, and then you see my um, oil pressure gauge um, wire runs, or tube runs down there. I'm gonna clean all that up too, but this works well for now. Um, okay, so I have my wiring, so you can see, here's the bottom of my fuel pump. So one of these is grounded, it's a positive ground system, but it, this pump doesn't care, can run either way. One of them's grounded to the car chassis right there. Here's my other wire. So it um, comes over through here and into the car to a switch, and then out of the switch, it runs over and is fed from the uh, junction block over there. So that junction block is hot anytime my battery disconnect is on or anytime the battery's hooked up. So with the Model A original ignition, you can't just tie it into the key switch because the key switch just interrupts um, the connection to the coil for the points. So if you do that, your pump would just turn on and off. Um, so what I did is on my little gauge panel here, I put an on off switch right there. So it's really easy to get to. And like I said, it's, it's connected. Uh, if my battery disconnects off, it can't be running, which I turn off when I park the car. Um, but I do have to remember to shut that on and off if my battery is connected and then my key just uh, turns the coil connection on and off um, So that's how I set that up. It works well and Simple my wiring runs down here. Here's my choke setup just a push pull cable and That mounts in the original place the original bracket for the gav rod came from Burt's Model A works great um, Runs down there, all of everything runs through a grommet down there. And I'm gonna, I've got some self tappers here to get this mounted. I'm gonna um, replace those with some shorter bolts and make that look cleaner. But sometimes you just run out of time and it's more fun to drive the car than uh, I'm not a perfection guy, anyways. I'm going for function here and have fun with it. So, okay, so that's my setup. So let me stop this. Um, and uh, we'll do a clip uh, running. All right, so I'm back here in the car. I have a disconnect down there. My battery's turned on. I'm in neutral, key on, fuel pump on. The car's already warm, so it should fire right up. And it does. Gonna have to put some bolts here. I have my splash guards installed and they rattle at certain RPMs. All right. Here's my setup. Still need to adjust my gauge a little bit. Or adjust my pressure. Fluctuates from two to four pounds sometimes. You can see my pump running, fuel going. Yeah, it runs real well. I'm real happy with the Weber. Car's much more drivable now. Not running insanely rich easy to adjust and got rid of my crazy rich smoking problem so I'm pretty happy with it it was a good setup pretty easy to install um, even not knowing what I was doing and turned out good so yeah I hope you like it